So let's look at some stat lines for a bunch more Space Marine units in 9th edition. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel, where over the past couple of weeks we've been going over a fair few of the leaked Space Marine datasheets that have come out in their packaging boxes. Now most of these ones I didn't think were quite big enough changes to warrant an entire video of their own, so we're just going to do a short summary and a bit of a discussion as to the changes on these models. We now know the stat line and weapon profiles for Intercessors, the Redemptor Dreadnought, Space Marine Scouts, Inceptors, Aggressors and the Impulsor. Some interesting changes and some interesting lack of change for some units, so let's jump straight into it. First up, and quite interestingly, we have the Space Marine Scouts. Now Games Workshop told us that most Space Marines will be going up to two wounds in this new update, but this doesn't appear to have affected the Scouts. Perhaps because they're not fully fledged Space Marines yet, or just to differentiate them a bit from their tactical battle brothers, Scout Squads are going to be reigning at one wound in the new Codex, it would seem. This means that while they were really quite comparable to tactical Marines in the previous edition, basically trading out a little bit of armour for one point and forward deployment options, now Space Marine Scouts and Tactical Marines are looking like they're going to be quite different. Tactical Marines are just going to be incredibly more durable, with 2 wounds and a 3 plus armour save. They're not going to be killed by enemy light infantry weapons very efficiently, whereas the Scouts still definitely are. It'll be interesting to see what people play when they could be running either 14 point Scouts, presuming they remain the same, which I imagine that they probably would, seeing as they're not really changing in terms of profile at all, or whether people want to shell out for 18 point Tactical Marines or 20 point Intercessors. There's a few other bits and bobs on their datasheet as well. We now definitely have confirmation that the Heavy Bolt is 3 shots at damage 2 and AP minus 1. Games Workshop had already confirmed the damage, but it's good to know that the number of shots is just the same. The Scout's Bolt Guns only have 24 inch range, where we saw a previous datasheet for Space Marine Veterans that had a 30 inch bolter on it. Maybe that was representing some sort of special issue Bolt Gun that only Veterans get. The standard one still seems to be 24 inches however. One change that I really quite like for the Scouts is that their shotgun has gone up in range and is now an Assault 18 inches weapon. Throughout 8th edition I've primarily been running Scouts with Bolters, though I thought that Combat Knife Scouts could be a bit more optimal for armies such as Blood Angels. The shotgun was just a little bit overshadowed in my mind, the only real advantage was if it got up very close to the enemy, and in general it was usually worth taking Bolters more than this, just for that extra option to get a long range shot if you needed it. Now it has 18 inch range, it's going to be a lot more of a decision. This one will be putting out more firepower on the move than bolters at targets that are mid-range away, and also that it keeps the same rules of gaining extra strength if you're right up close to the enemy, and that's going to make even more of a mess. Shotgun scouts might well be the way to go over bolters for some armies now. In terms of their melee weapons, the sergeant has an Astartes chainsword with AP-1, but the combat blades are still AP-0, which isn't great news for reavers as they're still not going to be the most overwhelming in close combat. Unfortunately from this leak there's no news on sniper rifles or missile launchers. This is just the data sheet for one kit of scouts, the other ones are in the sniper scouts kit. Next up I wanted to take a look at the Redemptor, whose stat line appears to be unchanged, but there's some funny things going on with a lot of his weapons. First of all, the heavy flamer that's mounted on his dreadnought close combat weapon has got a weird change, it's still 8 inch range and strength 6, despite Games Workshop saying that flamer weapons and heavy flamers would all be 12 inch now. I don't know if this is a unique piece of kit for the Redemptor, or maybe just a misprint. Maybe Dreadnought Flamers are just going to have a different profile from now on. Next, his Gatling guns have both been slightly upgunned. The Heavy Onslaught Gatling Cannon is Strength 6 and 12 shots now, so it's going to be wounding Toughness 5 on 3s, which is a big deal. His Standard Onslaught Gatling Cannon is now 8 shots rather than 6, just as we saw on the Invader ATV, so if you take the one with all the shots, then you're going to be putting out 20 shots, at decent strength and AP, never mind anything else such as Storm Bolters or that Icarus Pod. Talking of which, the Icarus Pod has gone to flat 2 damage rather than D3, a bit of a small and slightly meaningless change really. There's something strange going on with his fist, which has now been listed as damage plus 3, which is a change from damage 6. I've got no idea whether this is going to be just flat damage 3 for the fist, or if it could be something like D3 plus 3 to get an upgrade. Definitely a misprint of some sort, I'm sure we'll get the real answer when the codex comes out. Finally, and potentially a big upgrade for the Plasma Incinerator, this thing now appears to be Strength 8, AP-4 and Damage 2. For every other Plasma weapon that we've seen so far, they've all been listed as their non-overcharged profile, and I suspect that in 9th edition it's just going to be listed in their special rules for the weapon, that if you overcharge, then you add plus 1 to the Strength and Damage, at the risk of being killed on 1s. If that is the case, then this will be the non-overcharged profile for the Macro Plasma Incinerator, meaning that you could be throwing out 
d6 strength 9 damage 3 shots which are just going to absolutely chew through things like gravis armor or other vehicles it could make this guy a genuinely decent firepower platform i would bear in mind that while a lot of these do look like buffs we don't know the points cost for the redemptor in the new codex and games workshop has confirmed that there will be points changes so i'd try and hold that assault on space marine buffs for a little bit at least all the buffs in the world don't necessarily make a model good if it's pointed too high so i'm going to reserve judgment until the actual space marine codex has come out Next we just have a few bits from the Intercessors, Inceptors, Aggressors and Impulsor. Intercessors seem pretty much unchanged, they're still 2 wounds and toughness 4, so in terms of durability at least they're not going to be any different to tactical marines, they're just going to have the amped up shooting from their various bolt rifles and likely retain the extra attack over the attack marines. The only real change that I could see is that the Astartes grenade launcher is now an assault weapon, it basically has the same profile as the Imperial Guard grenade launcher except 30 inch range. Because it's assault, it's actually a bit more useful potentially. Depending on its special rules, it does mean that you might be able to fire it at the same time as the bolt rifle, rather than instead of it. Next, the Inceptor's datasheet is entirely unchanged, so no extra protection for Gravis, but to me they do seem to be very usable at the moment. Despite losing fly to fall back and shoot, their deep strike firepower with all those assault bolter shots is very efficient, as is the bigger punch from their plasma exterminators. Next, we have the Aggressor Squad, where their gauntlet fist profiles have just mirrored the power fist change. Power fist went from damage D3 to damage 2, so against things like 2 wound infantry it's potentially a slight upgrade. Their bolt storm gauntlets are pretty much unchanged, but the flame storms have now gained that 12 inch range that most flamers will. This is a potentially very nice change for them, as it means they could be flaming people straight out of deep strike, which was one of the things that held them back quite a bit before. It could be very scary with Salamander's lists bringing them straight out of strategic reserve, you now wouldn't even need to use the long range marksman trait to be able to get them in range. I still think it's a potentially very good buff to have on them, buffing those flamer ranges up to 15 inches could be very nice, but I'd say it's a little bit less mandatory than before, and maybe some other chapter tactics could be more useful. It'll be interesting to see if this pretty significant buff comes with a points increase on the flame storms or not. Finally, we have the Impulsor. Heavy Stubbers seem to be changing to 4 shots rather than 3 now. The Impulsor has 2 of them, with the Twin Icarus variant being 36 inches and 8 shots now, which I think isn't too bad of a change. It was fairly good value for what you paid in terms of points for damage output, but still was just a little bit underwhelming for the main armament of a transport. Interestingly, the Iron Hail Heavy Stubber has taken a bit of a side grade. It's now 4 shots as well, but it's 24 inches in range rather than 36. It's going to be interesting to see what other heavy stubbers across the 40k range go to, particularly ones for Imperial Guard and Admech. Again, much like the Redemptor, the Icarus rocket pod went to damage 2 rather than D3. So a few interesting bits and bobs there. Solid improvements to the Redemptor's firepower, which seems very in line with pretty much most of these leaked datasheets, both Space Marine and Necron, generally having improvements to their firepower. Shotgun scouts might be a bit more of a thing now, and the Flamestorm Aggressors are looking far more viable than before as well. Let me know what you think of the changes down in the comments below, and feel free to subscribe if you haven't already for more 40k content each day. I'll certainly be keeping an eye on any new datasheet changes that come out. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'd just like to mention that I have an Element Games affiliate link, which is down in the video description below. If you were thinking about buying some model soldiers in the near future, then Element Games is a discount retailer in the UK that gives 10-20% off Warhammer miniatures. If you click on the link in the video description and buy something off their site, then it doesn't cost you any extra at checkout or anything, but a small amount of the money goes to help support all specs tactics, so it can be a way to support the channel on things you are already going to buy. I do have a very similar link for people in the USA and Canada for Amazon. Again, that works basically exactly the same if you click on that one and buy something. Whether it's Warhammer or something completely different, then a small amount of money goes to help support the channel. Could be something to consider if you are thinking about buying something off Amazon in the near future. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.